When you jump into Hogwarts Legacy, the game basically just throws a ton of features at you. Unique mechanics, new spells, as well as a variety of challenges to improve yourself and your character. And oftentimes, as you actually get into the open world segment of the game, a lot of these features just go forgotten or even are just never explained by the game overall. So in this video, I want to share a bunch of tips and tricks around some of the lesser known or outright secret features of Hogwarts Legacy, such as how valuable the collections menu is. Many enemies in Hogwarts Legacy have specific counters or even unique mechanics tied to some of the spells you may have access to. You're able to learn all about these in the collections menu. Every time you encounter an enemy, they'll be added to this menu with a brief page on them. And for many of these enemies, it'll also describe their unique counters or unique in-game mechanics. For example, there's two unique mechanics with dug bugs. As they are charging their tongue attack, you're able to use Lavioso to hold them in the air for a longer period than a typical stun. And immediately after they use their charging attack, you can use any four spell in the game to flip them over like a turtle and they'll be briefly stuck there. There's going to be a ton of unique gameplay elements like this for all kinds of enemies. So as you're facing a tougher enemy, make sure you actually read what their counters are because again, it's all easily available in your menu. Hogwarts Legacy also has a shiny Pokemon mechanic. Basically, as you go out to capture creatures for the rumor requirement, there's a chance you can get a shiny one. As of right now, it seems like this is just a visual difference. These shiny variants are going to be a different color, but will also have a little cross next to them. It seems like basically every creature you can get for the rumor requirement will have a shiny variant if you could find it, such as these little white mooncaps that have bright blue eyes or even gold golden unicorns. As far as I could tell, the shiny variants don't actually give you a bonus, they're just a bit rare, a bit more special, and of course, look way cooler. You generally are going to find them in the same exact location where these creatures typically spawn. It's just these shiny versions have a bit of a smaller chance to spawn overall. Which speaking of, certain creatures will only spawn at a certain time of day. Like unicorns. Unicorns will spawn at this unicorn den on the northern side of the map. You'll almost always be able to find one unicorn here, but only at nighttime. So if you went here and were trying to figure out why nothing was spawning, you have to actually make Make sure it's nighttime and this will apply to a bunch of the creatures in the game. Although good luck finding a shiny unicorn as it seems like that is the single rarest creature in Hogwarts Legacy right now. And if you're diving into the rumor requirement, I also have a couple of tips for you. To place things in the rumor requirement, you of course need Moonstone. The single best way to get Moonstone early on is to use the vanishing spell that you unlock right as you unlock the rumor requirement on all of the miscellaneous items that are placed around the room of requirement. There is a ton of things here. You can quite literally just spam the spell on all of these items and you will end up getting several hundred moonstone and there should be plenty for many of the early crafting tables that you will need but now that you can actually place down some crafting tables make sure you actually buy the right ones early on i would definitely recommend buying large pot planters as opposed to their smaller and cheaper alternatives this being because any plant can go in a large pot so to give you full access to grow whatever you want where in small pots only small plants can fit these planters cost several thousand galleons they're some of the most expensive things you'll be buying early on so starting with a large one is definitely a good idea i've seen a lot of stress online around leveling up and talent point distribution in Hogwarts Legacy, but I have a few clarifications on that front. Right off the bat, in Hogwarts Legacy, you don't actually level up just from taking out enemies. In reality, the only reason you gain experience for taking down an enemy is you're progressing one of the challenges around them. So as you can see on this character, I completed the challenge for taking out spiders. And since I completed each of the levels of this challenge, now when I fight spiders, I gain zero experience. This applies to all of the various enemies in the game. You only gain experience for them as long as you still have a challenge associated with them. So in general, a lot of the XP gain is going to be front-loaded in a Hogwarts Legacy, because for the second half of the game, you won't even get experience for most of the combat encounters. The first 20 or so levels are going to come very quickly, while the second 20, and yes, the level cap is level 40, but the second 20 levels are going to come much more slowly. And it also is worth noting that a lot of the challenges do have some genuinely cool rewards, like for completing the spider challenge, you do get this knight armor. It's not only experience, there are some actual cool cosmetics here also. But since leveling up is going to massively slow down by mid-game, make sure you spend your early talent points wisely. The max level in this game is level 40, like I mentioned, but you can only get 35 talent points in total, but they're going to be 48 different talent options. So there's going to be 13 talents you are unable to take in Hogwarts Legacy. It also is worth noting that gear in Hogwarts Legacy is leveled, and when you loot gear from a chest, it's always going to be your current level. So the vast majority of the time, if you are leveling up, especially in the early game, as you clear through a dungeon and loot some gear, that gear you just looted is probably better than whatever you're wearing. So in the first half of the game, switching out your gear on the regular, especially before you can apply traits and things like that, is definitely recommended. As we mentioned in the last tips video, as soon as you loot any gear, it's going to be added into the transmog system, so selling or just destroying old gear is perfectly okay, you're not really losing anything. The map in Hogwarts Legacy is also telling you a bit more than you may realize. Have you ever noticed these flags on the map? Well, black flags mean a side quest 
is available in that area. So you can see this in Hogwarts itself. All of my flags on Hogwarts are black because I have side quests available in every various section, but also for the Hogsmeade map and the world map overall. But if you don't have any quests available in a particular area, the flag is going to be white instead. Everyone recommends doing those Merlin trials early on, but what I think in some ways is even more important are the ancient magic hotspots. These pop up all over the map. And what these will do is expand your ancient magic abilities. For just completing two of these, you'll actually gain a whole extra ancient magic slot. These puzzles are explained briefly in the game, but very briefly, and they're incredibly simple. Basically, as you activate the core hotspot location, you just have to walk over to the other smaller hotspot areas right around that core location and step on them. Literally just walk over the magic and I guess pop it. Many of these can be completed in under a minute. And again, they provide you quite a big buff in combat. So if you are struggling with Hogwarts Legacy, I highly recommend doing these. But we also have some handy broom tips. As I mentioned in the last video, you can cast Revelio while on a broom and it will reveal far more things around you. But you take this even further as you are able to loot things while still on a broom. I constantly see people dismounting to loot the surrounding area, but you don't need to do that. You can reveal things far and wide and then swoop in broomside to loot all of that very quickly. And if you want to land and dismount very quickly, the best way is to just hold the dismount key. That's going to be the B key on PC. When you're in there, you can just hold the dismount key and you will auto automatically start lowering directly to the ground like you're a helicopter. And I found just holding the B key while you're relatively near the ground is definitely the fastest way to land and continue on with whatever you're doing. Another pretty crucial tip is you don't actually need to slot Wingardium Leviosa. Instead, you could just use Accio. After unlocking Wingardium Leviosa, which is another control spell, that's going to allow you to not only pull objects, but actually rotate and raise or lower them as well. But instead of spending a spell slot on this, you can just cast Accio. And if you try and manipulate the object that you're using Accio, on, you can actually use Wingardium Leviosa in tandem, and your character will literally say the second spell after saying Accio. It's really handy, it basically just gives more utility to the Accio spell overall, and it's always good to not have to waste another spell slot. But one very common tip with Hogwarts Legacy is to turn off the minimap for a more immersive experience, but some people don't really like that. So what I found to be a preferable alternative to that is turning off minimap pathing. This is going to leave the minimap on, but it'll show you some of the nearby icons or locations, but as you're doing a quest, your minimap won't have that guided path on it. It's not going to point you directly to where you have to go, and instead you could use the in-game guide if you'd rather. Those are some of the tips I found to be the most helpful, or at least the least well explained in game. For several of these, the game technically tells you about them, but it's so brief and while a lot of other stuff is being explained that I think a lot of people are missing them. The counters to enemies being right in your menu at all times in particular is a pretty handy one you could reference back to often, but I just don't see a lot of people doing. If you are interested in more Hogwarts Legacy content, you can take a look at some of the other tips I shared in the previous video. But otherwise, I thank you all again for watching and I hope to see you all next time.